Hi everybody, this week on ANN News Kids, we'll be talking about Kamala Harris, Asia military advancements, India farmers protest and coronavirus statistics, the country of the week, it's Ukraine and Sudan was the first one to get it once again, congratulations. The extra fun segment is all about creativity because in the pre your career segment, we are talking to Bipin Makund who is the Global Head of Research and Development and Innovation for Cognizant. He gives amazing advice and he's already made two games that help en enhance creativity and helps link ideas. We've linked the games in the description below, so don't forget to check it out and comment below. Also, like, subscribe and share because we are trying to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Thank you. minutes on Friday, Kamala Harris became the first woman to have presidential powers in the U.S. Joe Biden was under anesthesia in his routine colonoscopy before his 79th birthday. Kamala Harris is the first woman, black and South Asian vice president in U.S. history and is also now the first one with presidential powers. <music> China's rapid military modernization is threatening countries in Asia like Japan, South Korea and India. Japan and South Korea started developing their militaries after threats from North Korea and China. Last month, North Korea criticized South Korea on their new missile launch. India also started having more investments in their military after their dispute with China over the Himalaya borders. India Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the repeal of three controversial laws for the farmers' protest, which lasted over a year. The farmers were protesting on these laws because they said that it would provide an entry for private players that would ruin their income. After a year of ignoring the farmers, the government finally announced this on Friday. Experts are saying that the only reason that the government announced this was because of the upcoming elections in Punjab and Uttar Pradesh, which both have a large population of farm farmers. <music> Coronavirus cases around the world are still increasing. The total coronavirus cases worldwide are about 258 million. The total deaths are almost 5.2 million. And the total recoveries are around 232 million. The top five countries with the most coronavirus cases are USA, India, Brazil, Mexico, UK and Russia. And the top five countries with the most coronavirus deaths are USA, Brazil, India, Mexico, and Russia. Austria also went into lockdown because of rising coronavirus cases, although earlier they said that the lockdown will only be for the unvaccinated. Thank you. Hi everybody, this week for the 36th Appear at Your Career Edition, we are talking to Dr. Bipin Makund, who is the Head of Research and Development and Innovation for Cognizant, which is a company. He also does work with creativity and innovation, and he's created games to enhance creativity and to link ideas. His advice and journey is really amazing, so it would be amazing if you could watch till the end. Thank you, and I really hope you enjoy. Okay, so my name is Bipin Makun. Uh, I am the global head of R&D and innovation for a company called Cognizant Worldwide. Uh, 
uh, I don't know if you've heard of Cognizant. Cognizant is a is a multinational corporation. We offer IT services, so development of software, implementation of digital solutions, and uh, of course, supporting and maintaining those applications for our clients. Uh, we service around 1,500 uh, clients. Most of them are among the top uh, Fortune 500. And uh, Cognizant is, is, is fairly big. It's 300,000 employees uh, worldwide. Around uh, most of our workforce is in India. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's a company that makes around $18 billion in revenue. And uh, yeah, so our, our market is within IT, digital computer science and software engineering. And my role is to, to run the R&D and, uh, and innovation for, for, so we've got a team for digital solutions. Yeah, digital engineering. Wow, that's really cool. That's amazing. And can you tell us a little bit more about what you do in digital engineering? Yes. So, so, my, so I've got a team and we do R&D, which is always great because you get to play with all the new toys in technology. And <laughs> so our first, but there is, uh, I mean, there is an objective which is very uh, critical for Cognizant. So my, uh, the first mandate of R&D is to try to predict the future. So that's what we do. So in 18 months from now, two years from now, what are the technologies, what are the principles and the discipline of software engineering Cognizant should be adopting in order to provide value to our clients and so that our clients can provide value to their clients. So it's always thinking about our clients' clients also. So this is the first thing. So we call that Horizon Watch. So we go along. So we're a bit like meerkats, you know, standing straight, looking (laughs) at the horizon and looking at all the trends that are happening. I don't know if you've heard about some of the trends like quantum computing, uh, mm-hmm. This is something that is coming up. Of course, you've heard about the cloud. The cloud is already all now, but yes. uh, the problem we have is uh, modernizing all system uh, yes. and moving them into the cloud. So this is something that I was part of prior to my role as uh, head of R&D. But currently, my team and I, what we do is we talk to a lot of universities. We talk to a lot of what we call uh, market analysts looking at those new technologies. And then what we do is uh, we don't take their words, uh, you know, and we don't trust them, whatever those vendors are Mm -hmm. saying. So we carry out experiments. That's what we do. So we are scientists that uh, carry out uh, experiments to try to Mm -hmm. validate hypothesis on behalf of our client. So, for example, there are big clients, big banks and insurers and life sciences. Uh, They want to know more about quantum computing and they hear yeah. a lot of, uh, you know, hype. They, they hear in, in IT, it's like that. There's always a big hype about things and you don't know what's real and what's not. So we carry out experiment uh, using the scientific method. So it's mm-hmm. unbiased. It's, it's what we call in a sandbox, independent from uh, the clients, from Cognizant. And we have interns. We have uh, newly graduates whom we hired. And we have university students and the clients' employees also working together to try to validate that hypothesis. And then from that, we create a report and we give it back to the client and we work with the client saying, will quantum computing provide the, what we call the quantum advantage you know, to your yeah. business or will it not? And all the problems that you have, you know, there are banks who've got system which are like 40 years old. 50 yeah. years old and making them what we call digital uh, so that they can exploit and, and, and uh, experience all the benefits of new technologies, modernizing that onto the cloud and all this. It's yeah. quite tough. It's, quite, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's plagued with a lot of problems. We have to be very careful. So yeah. prototyping and experimenting first, a bit like when you're doing a vaccine, you have to do the... Mm-hmm. Uh, but not as critical, life critical as a vaccine. Mm-hmm. But uh, we need to do all those experiments and then provide the output. So this is the first part of R and D. So it's experimenting and validating what those technologies are doing. And the second aspect is you've 
you've you've you've you've played it. It's about creativity. I'm really I fell in love with creativity a long time ago. I started working on it since 2016 and got a group of people. Uh, even your dad is part of that now. We 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 are working and. Uh, what we want to do is nurture the creative confidence, uh, especially in kids, and yeah. try to encourage them and empower them with the proper tool to harness that creative energy so yeah. that they can innovate on targeted problems. You know? And that's the most beautiful part of my job. I've been, I've been talking to pupils and students, like brilliant mm -hmm. students like you, and it's it's amazing. I mean, they, they test you to the limit, you know. I mean, <laughs> even working with I've been doing some of the experiment with my daughter, so she's five years old, and working with kids is amazing because if they don't like something, they will tell you, I don't like it, you know. They will tell you to your face, you know, I don't like it, which is great. These are <laughs> the great feedback. Mm -hmm. If you manage to convince kids about something, then you will be able to convince the grown-ups easily. <laughs> So that's the that's what I love, and uh, creativity is something that I believe is extremely important. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, you told us a little bit about your journey, but could you tell us a bit more on how you got into this sector? Ah, so you know, you remember Indiana Jones? I don't know if you've heard about Indiana Jones. Yeah. I mean, yes. I grew I grew up uh, in the eighties and nineties. I was a teenager in the nineties. Uh, and uh, there was a movie called Indiana Jones, you know, and yeah, I want, yeah. I actually, I seriously want to become an archaeologist, you know, and <laughs> I thought it would be like this, you know, with the whip and all going to the pyramids and doing all the things. <laughs> and then, you know, being in Mauritius, everybody was telling me, archaeology, I mean, what will you do with that? I mean, it, it's something, but I liked it, you know, but later on, uh, I, my my uncle and my dad bought me a computer in 1990 1991 and at, at that time a small computer you know they were big but they didn't have the processing power it was really expensive and I started uh, playing with it we started playing some of the game like Pac-Man and all these things Prince yeah. of Persia and I started coding uh, then uh, there were you won't remember that where, you know, when you switch on the computer, it takes like five minutes for it to load. You don't have this problem now. <laughs> but we were, I was with a group of friends. We were very interested in coding. So I was really fascinated by having something in my mind to create a small game and then quickly coding it and having it on the screen, you know, yeah. using languages like GW Basic or Logo and things like that. I don't think you will remember that and um, Pascal and all these things. And uh, I got into it. And since I forgot about India Jones and I really got into programming and uh, I think it's, it was the only subject I did well. I, I failed my IB uh, first year. I had to do it again. I was not a very good student, but at least in computers uh, and mathematics, I, was, I really liked it because you didn't have to revise a lot like history or literature and all these things. Uh, and then that's how I got into it. So I went to, I came in 1999 in the uh, yeah. UK at Kingston University, started my, wow. my uh, bachelor degree in computer science. And then mm -hmm. I got a scholarship uh, to do a PhD. Uh, I did a PhD. And then uh, I started working with universities. Uh, I'm a visiting scholar and industrial advisor at Imperial College London. I sit wow. on the computer science research, uh, research council with Professor Nobuku and also with the with Kingston University. I am a visiting scholar, and it's amazing because I've always kept in touch with university, and I would uh, advise you to do the same. When I mean, you two will will do really well, uh, even when you join the corporate world or if you are entrepreneur starting your own business. Always keep a good relationship with your university because. Yeah. University, they do those research, you know, about the future, about things that might happen, things that will happen. And to keep an eye on that and contribute and, and even contributing in such research will make your working life much happier, uh, much relevant. And also you will thrive in the, in the working environment if you, if mm -hmm. you stick to the, the academic roots that you have. 
Wow, thank you so much. And that's a really interesting journey, starting from wanting to become an archaeologist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes. And what else do you really like about your job? So currently, I am. Uh, what I'm doing now is, uh, I'm, I, as you know, I'm, I'm coding a lot. Uh, yeah. We're doing experiment with Cognizant, but also uh, with the foundation that I started, uh, Linkology. I'm, I'm, I'm writing games and I'm enjoying that a lot. And one of the things that really fascinates me is, uh, is creativity, you know, and human ingenuity. I mean, if you think about it, we are creative. We are a very creative species. And that's why we were able to put a man on the moon and soon we'll put people on Mars. And uh, if you think about a, sp a species like the humans, I mean, compared to the vastness of the universe, we are infinitely small. We don't even exist on the scale yeah. of the universe. But we were able to uh, think about this greatness of the universe. We were able to create mathematical models to explain the force of gravity and how the yeah. universe works. We were able to, I don't know if we discover or discovered or invented mathematics, could be both, but with that, we were able to write uh, using the mathematics language to, to write about physics. And, and not only that, we, we, we were also in the field of music and poetry, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and for a species to achieve such feat, you know, such amazing feat, it's, it's crazy, you know. And yeah. one thing that fuels all this is uh, creativity, you know. Yes. But creativity is not a survival tool. I mean... The sharks, they are not as creative as we are, but they've lived on Earth more than we did. So they've survived yeah. longer than we did. So if it's not a survival tool, where many people say, you know, uh, evolution is about survival of the fittest, but fittest doesn't mean the strongest, it means the one that is more adapt uh, adaptable, you know, the one that can change with things. And so why do, why do we have creativity, especially when we were still not on the top uh, of the food chain, uh, yeah. you know, the cave people, yeah. they were being hunted by the saber-toothed tigers. They were being hun hunted by the short-faced uh, uh, bear. And uh, still, we were spending a lot of time to draw on the cave wall. And yeah. drawing on the cave wall did not make us stronger to fight yeah. our, our predator. But we were still doing that. And it's counterintuitive. I mean, species will spend a lot of energy to try to protect themselves and survive. Whereas human beings, they were spending a lot of energy doing something which was crazy, art. Art is the first thing we started doing. But by doing art, we've uh, triggered something in us mm -hmm. and that led to creativity. And creativity is not innovation or invention or discoveries or breakthrough. Creativity is what you need to invent, what you need to discover things, you know? And it's more like an emotion yeah. rather than a skill set. And one thing that you should know, girls, that all of us are creative, and you especially, kids, they are extremely creative, you know? And it's, it's in us. It's something that it's practically written in our DNA. Now, how many times you find yourself waiting for something or for someone and you take a pen and you start doodling for no reason or you're sitting on the street you take a piece of you take a stone and you start scribbling on the on the on the curb or you're sitting on the beach you take your a stick and you start drawing on the sand why do you do that you know you're wasting energy to do that but you still do it and you feel happy and this is something that has been given to us you know uh, in a way, we've developed that through evolution. But the problem is our school systems and work, and later on when you'll, you'll work, they tend to focus more on numeracy and literacy rather than creativity. Okay? Yeah. So at school, even though they make things a little bit more uh, creative now, they bring, but if you sit in an exam, the exam is still about testing your memory for a definition, asking you to 
describe something and then apply something, you know, in, a, in, a, in an environment. So it's about learning known answers to known questions, yeah. which was good during the Industrial Revolution. But asking new questions, encouraging and cultivating kids to ask new questions, you know, that is something that they're still failing to do. And what happened is that they squash your creativity, you know? So if you think about when you were at nursery and preschool and, you know, kindergarten and... Uh, and never, So it starts like a, if you look at the, yeah. the fun that you were having and the amount of things that you were learning at nursery and at year R or first year and things, you had a lot of fun. You were doing a lot of creative things. But then as you move and you grow into your syllabus and your curriculum and you go to the colleges, you go to high school, you go to universities, that line gets narrower and narrower until at university they will ask you to, fo to focus on one or two fields. That's the degree. And then you don't find time to do the other exciting things. And the question is why? Because the brain is the most complex things we've seen in the universe so far. Yeah the human brain. And it was not designed to memorize things for the long term. It's a neural net. It was designed to look at several things that are completely different and then connecting those different things together to come up with a new thing. That's what the human brain was designed to do. And that's why we are so good. But this is not being nurtured at school. So I am extremely... Uh, interested in that and that's why you know we're creating those games so i like yeah. this aspect of my work and working with kids and nurturing so my if people ask me now am i a software engineer or a computer scientist i'm a computer scientist by training but i don't say that now i tell people that i'm a farmer of creativity my objective is to cultivate and to stimulate the creative confidence of especially kids you know, mm -hmm. and let that grow and then provide them with a fertile, safe and happy environment for them to start, uh, for them to start uh, harnessing that creative energy yeah. and then innovate on mm -hmm. targeted problem to make the world a better place. So that's the part that I'm extremely happy about. Wow. wow, thank you so much for that. Yeah. You really explained it in very simple terms and very easy to understand. But it's and a very really interesting view uh, at it. Thank you. Um, Can you I mean, Nitya, no, yeah, sorry. it's back yeah. up. Yes. Yeah. And lastly, what is your advice to kids? Uh, you also mentioned before about university and staying in touch with your university, but do you have any other advice? Yes, of course. And... Mm -hmm. uh, and okay, so my advice to you guys is question everything, challenge everything. You know, grown ups tell, they, they do tell you to do things, you know, yeah. and you have to listen to them. But there are things that you have to challenge, especially in the fields of science, technology, even art and humanities, you know. But artists, are more prone to challenging things and that's why they create their art the way they are and things like that. But in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, we tend not to use this word creativity. We tend not to challenge, uh, you know, what we are taught uh, at school. So challenge everything. You challenge it to make it better. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing that I want to tell you is that the age... When you grow up from, from being a toddler, an infant, a toddler, you know, a child, a teenager, this period now, your creativity is truly amazing. Now, you might not see it now because you have your homework, you have your things that you have to do at school. But what I would advise you is believe in your creativity and your creative power. It's better than grown-ups. You're still unconditioned by corporate politics and politics of society and enjoy yourself to learn about many things, okay? Now, you don't need to be an expert in everything, 
just know a little bit about many things yeah. and specialize yourself in one or two fields. School is doing a good job at that, but also nurture the diversity of knowledge. So read a book about quantum computing for dummies or when, or doesn't need to be the scientific one to start with. Read a book about Pablo Picasso. Read a book about physics. You know, read a book about aquaculture. You know, read a book about sharks. You know, it doesn't matter. The more you provide this diversity of knowledge, even a little bit, huh? you don't need to be an expert. Yeah. Just either. It's like watching a documentary. I call it a doc documentary level depth. That's it. Yeah. When you give that to your brain, your brain is excited. It's like the dog wagging its tail like this. Mm -hmm. The more small knowledge you provide to your brain from different fields, the more opportunity your brain will have to connect those things. Okay. Then my third advice is connecting things. Mm -hmm. You learn what you have to learn at school, but yeah. on your own time, Let's say Anya and Nitya, you are, I don't know, you are waiting for your class to start, ballet class or something to start. While you are sitting down, close your eyes and think of two different words, like sushi and Tom Cruise, okay? And in your mind, try to hop and connect sushi with Tom Cruise, okay? Mm -hmm. And every day change the world. The more different the words are, the better. Mm -hmm. But you start with simple one. For example, you can start with sun and plant. And then it's easy, photosynthesis. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then next time you go further apart, further apart, further apart. What you're doing is when you are taking two things that are different, yeah. this is called divergent thinking. And when you're trying to connect them together, it's called convergent thinking. Both are important for creativity. Remember, the brain is a muscle. Just like you go to the gym to take care of your physical body, if you play the connection game in your mind, you don't need any mobile or anything, just play it in your mind, you are creating a ripple effect of associations, a ripple effect of connection in your mind, mm -hmm. some of which may lead to a breakthrough. You see? So that's my third advice. Whenever you have some time, even while you're brushing your teeth, you know, yeah. just think of two different words and try to hop and make it harder and harder as you do that. That's yeah. something that will make the objective is within three to four months, you will start seeing pattern emerging when the teacher is talking to you, you're playing at school or things like that. You will see some pattern emerging, yeah. you know, the French call it sometimes je ne sais quoi. You will feel that je ne sais quoi, you know in things and then at some point when you get a connection you say aha it's called the aha moment you know <laughs> and you get a breakthrough and one of the things the four things uh, guys that i want to tell you yeah don't take anything for granted in this world okay because there are some amazing things that happen for great invention yeah. To, be, to, 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 to happen, you know? There are amazing things that occurred in the past for great invention. For example, I'll tell you something. So you know that many parents, they would want their kids to be either lawyers or doctors or engineers, you know? They don't value the world of art that much as they value the art world of science because they think they'll get a better job, which is not true. If you're good at what you do, if you're the best, the best poet will have a better life than the mediocre physicist. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Okay? Because there are connections into everything. Mm -hmm. So without poetry, we would not have invented law. Law would not have been created if it was not for poetry. It's because of poetry that we have law and there's a connection in the history of invention. And it's the same thing for frogs. You know the frogs that you see? Yeah. Without frogs, we would not have a mobile phone to talk with now. The mobile phone technology happened in some, some time in the past, 
the frog was important for that invention to happen. <laughs> Do you know that without the earthworms, planet Earth would have been six million kilometers square smaller for human beings to live on? Six exactly. million kilometers square is the size wow. of two India. Wow. So whether, whether it is the quantum reactor, whether it is nuclear fusion, yeah. big things, or it is the simple wiggly worm or the frog or poetry, don't take anything for granted because in that connected thinking that I was telling you, everything matters. If you want to, if you want to fuel your invention and create breakthroughs that are amazing, we've studied about a thousand of the greatest inventions since 2016. What we found out is great innovators, they embrace, they have an open mind to embrace fields that were not their own fields of expertise. Not only embrace, they respected it. Because there are some people who are lawyers or engineers. They ask you, what do you, what do, you do? Ah, I'm an artist. And they, immediately, if a surgeon heard here that in a party, a surgeon here, you're an artist and all these things, they've already made some preconditions. Oh, my job is better than you. you know? That's not true. Yeah. That's not true at all. You know? And... You, we need to respect, we need to embrace, and that's my fourth thing. Don't take anything for granted. Connect with wow. So these are the things that are, is important because, you know, girls, I feel sad to tell you that my generation and the previous generation is giving you a mess. You know, we've, we've damaged Mother Earth to an extent now that we're trying to do something. The, the 1980s were, were the peak of capitalism and it was all about greed is good. If you can have, why do you have two Ferraris when you can buy 10 Ferraris? You know, yeah. it was about this time. And we didn't know at that time. You know, it's mainly my father's generation who, who, mm -hmm. who think, but it will be tough for you. We won't be here for you and for your children. It will be tough, tougher than now. Yeah. The only superpower that you have to really face those terrifying problems, to come up with terrific solution that will not only benefit the human race, but the planet and all of the living things together is creativity. And it's already in you, your ancestors, the evolution of erect yeah. Homo erectus to sapiens, your ancestors gave you that superpower. Nurture it whenever you can. Wow, thank and you so much. And, and, and change the world. Wow, thank you thank so you. much for this interview. It, it was, was very, um, it was amazing. And like I said, it was very No, fun. it's all right. Anytime. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. This week on the a and News Kids Extra Fun segment, we'll be talking about creativity. Creativity is the ability to look at problems and tasks in a new and different way. It is the ability to use imagination to solve problems and to generate new ideas. Creativity helps us solve complex problems and look at tasks in new ways. Creativity is found in different parts of life, science, literature, art and music. We have displayed a few problems and you can try and pause the video to see if you can solve them. L'Ukraine est un pays d'Europe. C'est le deuxième plus grand pays d'Europe après la Russie. Sa population est de 44 millions d'habitants et la capitale est Kiev. C'est un pays où le Tchernobyl désastre a passé. C'était un désastre en 1986 et c'était l'un des plus mal catastrophes nucléaires du monde et de l'histoire. Le costume national de l'Ukraine et le Vichy Lanka.
et l'Ukraine est le plus grand producteur mondial de graines de tournesol. Le plus grand désert d'Europe se trouve en Ukraine. La station Arcelana est le plus profond et l'un des plus profonds stations du monde et se situe en Ukraine. Il y a une profondeur de 105 mètres. L'Ukraine est la ville en Europe qui est la moins chère pour voyager. La mo montagne Overla est la plus grande montagne de l'Ukraine. Thank you.